College football nerds here to discuss Duke and Alabama, the season opener. College football is finally here. Bama fans, we did a Alabama preview uh, about a week or two ago and did a little bit of the old, a little bit of the new in terms of what to expect, what happened last year, how the coaching changes and personnel changes are going to impact Alabama this year. So some of you knuckleheads haven't watched it yet. We can tell by the view count. You need to go check it out. Please remember to subscribe, especially you Duke fans. We talk about college football all over the country, not just SEC, not just Alabama, not just the top couple of teams in the country. So hang around. I think you'll like what you hear. All right, Josh, uh, for those of you who don't know, Josh gets nerdy with me. He's my co-host. We're going to talk about this one right now. The, the line on this game is like 34 points. And it's an interesting point that you brought up to me before we started talking about this, that last year, Alabama Louisville, even though there was a little more question mark there, Louisville was assumed to be a little bit better team than they ended up being, was only 28. So we're like a touchdown worse for Alabama's opponent going into this game. I would argue that Duke is going to be better than Louisville last year. So I don't know if that, what that says about Alabama, what it says about Duke. But in your mind, in general, what does it say about this game? So there's two things. One, you have to look at what Louisville was last year. Um, we had a preview, and at the time, I think a lot of it was just a misconception about how good Louisville was. We went in depth about why we thought Louisville was going to kind of fall flat in their face, to be honest. Um, there were a lot of trend lines when you looked at Petrino's past and things that signaled a bad season. But I, I think a lot of it, talks to what Alabama was able to do in the first half of last year. They really couldn't set a betting line that Alabama couldn't hit early in the season. When Tua wasn't pressured, when that offense was healthy and the defense was operating at anywhere near a decent level, Alabama could pretty much put up whatever number they wanted. And they were hitting over and unders by themselves. So I think a lot of this really speaks to how skittish I think odds makers are in setting any line against Alabama right now. Um, and, and we've seen it with Clemson too. I mean, those, these two teams that really ran the gauntlet last year all the way up to the national title game, it can't be said enough. I mean, we kept kind of complaining all season. We don't know how good Alabama and Clemson are because they're unusually good to the point where no one can really set a benchmark. And what I'm seeing from this line in this game is the odds makers are saying again, you know, Duke at 34 and a half may not necessarily mean that they think Duke is a terrible team. It may be a reflection again that the odds makers are looking at this game and saying, Alabama is so good that we think you could lose 55 to 20 and be solid. Like 34 and a half is a mountain. You normally see that. Which, by the way, that's what that's 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 basically the Auburn score last year. Right. For right. I mean, it's it. I mean, that's the problem. What was it? It was like. 52 to 20 or something last season. So yeah, something like that. If that's, if that's sort of the standard you're having to hit, I mean, again, it, 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 I think it speaks more to where they think Alabama is and the difficulty of beating them at a high level than it speaks to really how poor they think Duke is though. It, it's worth noting that the Duke team Alabama is going to play this game is nowhere near the Duke team that, we thought they were probably going to play a few few months ago. Well, and they've had some injuries there, and obviously they don't have Daniel Jones, which which would have been an interesting matchup. But I will say, if we're looking at their opener last year with Louisville, one place where Duke I do think will be better is quarterback. Uh, Quinn Harris, there's not a lot of film on him, by the way. If Alabama fans want to check it out, um, Matt White did a great breakdown. It was a pretty quick view uh, video on YouTube. You can check it out. I'll link it in the description. Um, he breaks down film a lot, and he broke down Quentin Harris and kind of what Alabama can expect from this Duke offense because at the end of the day, you, you do have someone that has some reps coming in at quarterback that has – Good athleticism, has got a good arm, but you've also got David Cutcliffe back there being the wizard, pulling the strings. So there's some interesting, I don't know, some excitement there because you've got an offense that's going to put up some points this year regardless. And I want you to touch on this if if you are, and and I promise we won't make this just an Alabama preview, but if you if you're an Alabama fan, um, one of the things you want to see is how these defensive pieces are fitting in um some old faces new again like lewis um against at least a competent offense to start the season 
So, and I'll repeat your plug. You know, you can look at Matt Wyatt and what he did, and I, I, I kind of not just tip my cap, but I kind of look to him and his insight. Former Mississippi State accomplished quarterback. So, I mean, he's in a real quarterback looking at the game. And, and everyone that knows anything about football will tell you that David Cutcliffe knows how to coach quarterbacks and knows how to assemble an offense. What Duke is going to do is they're going to try to scheme you into causing a guy to be open and they're going to throw to him. They're going to get your linebackers isolated in space. Sure, everybody does that, but Cutcliffe teaches things like high-low reads and in ways in which you can look at a formation uh, in terms of what the defense is showing you and then what they give you and know this corner and zone coverage here can cover this guy or this guy. And I'll look at which way he moves and throw ball the other way. So they can do a lot of things offensively at Duke that can function kind of irrespective of how good the offense is from a talent perspective. Um, and But even still, I mean, last year with Jones, they weren't overly successful um, he had it talked about a lot in the draft, right? He had like the highest drop rate or second highest drop rate in college football. And the problem for Duke the past few years has not really been that there haven't been plays available. It's that execution has not been on nearly a high enough level. So if there's one thing I'd take away from that too, it's that Duke is going to have a lot of new faces. They may actually be better than we're expecting them to be. It's hard to say. Again, injuries, Bobo, the guy that was kind of expected to be the leading receiver coming off a good freshman campaign, not going to be in this contest. So we really have no idea what the execution level is going to be. But we do know that they're going to probably cause guys to be open and probably frustrate, frankly, a lot of Alabama fans because Cutcliffe is a master at creating separation and creating offense really irrespective of the talent advantage or disadvantage that he has. The thing that concerns me if I'm a Duke fan looking at the the season last year, and we've talked about this so far in the preseason, I hate looking back because so much has changed, but a lot has remained the same. And one of the things, you know, uh, look, I think Duke offensively is going to be fine this year. I don't think they're going to be great against Alabama. Nobody is, um, except for Clemson last year. Um, but in general, this Alabama defense is considerably better with the pieces they got back off of injury from last year than the defense last year. And Duke is probably, not probably, they're absolutely going to take a step back, especially at quarterback. My concern is defensively for Duke when they face teams that had a good, not even great offense, a good offense like Wake 59, Temple 27, North Carolina, they gave up 35 points, um, Pitt 45, like even 28 to Virginia, that Virginia team was a poor offensive team. Great defense, great secondary, not a great offensive team. So for Alabama fans, and I hate to say this, I'm not giving anything away. We think Alabama's going to run away with this one. For Alabama fans coming into this opener, if you're not worried like there were a couple of years against Florida State with the excitement of whether or not you're going to win, what do you get to do or what are you going to do? What are you looking for going into this game specifically not only to add a little interest, but to be that fan, like, what are you looking for? You're not looking for a win here. You're looking for something else, right? I think you have to be, pretty much. So you can look for a, a lot of different things, execution level. I, one of the big things for me to look for from Alabama was would be how how well they can consistently execute the offense on first, second, and third down to continually move yardage in in, in a consistent and effective way. They got really bad last year about uh, early in the year creating bad situations that Tua would bail them out. There, there was a lot of talk about you know third and Tua for like three games. I think he threw like one incompletion on third down or some sort of psychotic statistic like that. I think maybe not enough is said about the fact that they kept getting in third and seven against teams that really had no business being in that situation win, given how talented they were. And if you got a quarterback that can get 11 yards every time you need it, on third down, why are you ever in third down? Right. Right? I mean, if, if you can be that effective, then why do you get to that point? I think a lot of it was sort of an over-reliance on our RPO that showed up later in the season when, when they get in third and long. They couldn't convert it every single time, and the offense sputtered. So I want to see them you know, use the tailbacks and use the tight ends to show improvement. I want to see them... You know, when they use the receivers in the passing game, not just trying to hit a, a bomb to the receivers, I want to see them actually 
using the receivers in a normal way if I to show improvement. Those are the things I want to see from Alabama to show me that Alabama's improved. So I, I think if you're an Alabama fan, you're obviously you're looking for the same tells. You're looking for them to show that they've improved through these different things. Like you said, it it is going to be hard with Duke. I mean, they've and touch on the I'll touch on the defensive injuries real quick. I mean, they've they've lost easily probably their best corner, what was expected to be potentially an all-conference quarter in Gilbert, um, losing their best linebacker in Quan Ash. They're not going to be the same unit they were. And then not only that, but they were 106th in the country in yard per carry allowed last year. So with this whole discussion aside, Alabama should be able to run the ball. So, you know, everybody wants to see the Tua show, but I think the biggest question for me is... You know, Duke's expected to take some steps forward, but can Alabama control this game from a physicality perspective? Because when Alabama push came to shove, couldn't really run the ball well enough, and especially in the red zone, to win last year. So against this Duke team, this is a really good, you know, case for Alabama to set the tone that they can go back to hard-nosed football, run the ball, force you to actually have to load the box, and then they can maybe get back to getting one-on-ones with their receiving core and their phenomenal quarterback rather than throwing into two deep looks every play like they did at the end of last year. If you're a Duke fan, is uh, I think the inverse is also true, that you probably aren't expecting a win here, um, n- not reasonably. Um, and I, I hate being defeatist like this because it's not fun, but it's just the reality. So if you're a Duke fan and you're able to put that out of your head in terms of like, we might win this game, what do you want to take away from this? Is it 24 points in good quarterback play or is it something else? I think the biggest thing you want to take away, one, is a lack of turnovers. You want to see your quarterback be efficient. If you're throwing the ball for... I mean, if you're Duke and you're throwing the ball for, let's say, five yards per attempt, I'm okay with that if the five yards per attempt are consistent pass plays that are being tackled quickly, right? You're throwing a hitch, and the guy's getting tackled. You're, you're throwing to the back, he gets three or four yards, he gets taken down. And then occasionally you offset that with an eight- or nine-yard play. What I'd be more concerned with is if you hit big plays on busts, because that's really more about what Alabama's doing wrong, right? Where you, you get something schematically, you hit the play, and he goes for a good chunk of yardage, and then you can't complete the the constant play. Like it, it, the best case scenario offensively, if you're struggling or or not struggling, is just going to be consistent offense, which hopefully turns into some points, but just shows that your offense is clicking. I think the other thing you want to see is better production in run defense. I mean, last year, I said they were 106. I mean, they were all over the map in run defense. Northwestern, they allowed 3.1 yards per carry. North Carolina, they allowed 8.5. Pitt, they allowed 9.3. And then, you know, Virginia Tech, they allowed less than two. Temple in the bowl game, they allowed less than two. It it was just a total, total sporadic mess. I think you want to see your defense not just – I think they can be solvent in the back end. The safeties are really good for Duke. They're probably – if you're an Alabama fan looking for deep shot after deep shot, Duke is actually really, really good at the safety position. They're probably not going to let them do that. But Duke's going to be susceptible to death by a thousand cuts. And if you're Duke, you don't want to be giving up 15 yard runs and just getting gashed. You'd like to see your defense at least make them get, you know, maybe it's even seven or eight yards per run, given what you're going to have to sacrifice in pass defense to keep them solvent. So that's one thing. And I think the other thing I'll say, Duke struggled in the pass rush department. So a lot of this game, too, is going to hand on can they get enough of a pass rush to sort of keep Alabama honest where they're having to. Really, on either sides of the ball, can you work the field? Can you make Alabama work the field, right? Not give up chunk plays on one side, not give up turnovers, and and sputter out on the other. All right, so this time you picked first in our previous uh, preview that we've already done. I'm going to pick first this time. I'm going to go for the score on this one. I'm going to go Alabama 52, Duke 17, and one of those – scores for Duke comes in the fourth quarter against the B team. And this is not a slight to Duke. Uh, we had this happen a lot last year and the last couple of years, really, where either we pick a blowout for Alabama or the model picks a blowout for Alabama and the up other side gets mad at us. Um, and, and that's just where we are right now. There's not a lot of parody in college football. 
um, and there's less parity as you approach Alabama and Clemson. So I, I like we said with the fact that Florida we're not high on and Miami might win the Coastal, Duke also might make some noise inside the ACC and just get absolutely worked by Alabama. I, I will say on the flip side, though, I, I think Alabama – might go into this game with the new coordinators, with the new personnel, and try a lot of things, which is another Nick Saban staple where they come out and look just ugly because they know they can go get a touchdown if they need it, but they treat it like a scrimmage. I don't think they're going to do that in game one. They didn't do it against Louisville. I think that's a game four kind of thing. So 52-17, Josh, tell me what you got. I'm going to have this game at 59-17. to 17. Uh it really comes down to one thing in my view. It's Duke can't stop the run. And when you start picking on scores, both of us think Alabama's going to win this game. So the question is, what does it look like in a blowout? And the problem for Duke is going to be really twofold. One, a team that can't stop the run in a runaway game tends to get blown out. Because if Alabama's got their backups in and they're running the football every play, Alabama has a very good shot to continue to score. Now, their running back situation is a little screwy right now with Alabama. They've been dealing with injuries. I don't know how much they're going to scale back to, you know, playing the walk-ons because they don't, they're, they don't, they do not want to get their third and fourth string guy hurt, I'm sure, having already lost. Um, It's obviously a luxury to say losing the third string running back, but my understanding that's, that's kind of deceptive. It was a really more like a three man rotation and they lost a key guy. And there's, again, not a ton of it, a ton of depth behind behind those guys now it's really just going to be a two-man rotation but on the other side of the ball too Alabama is a lot deeper I think this year than they've been the past few years the recruiting classes have been really good and they've been defensively loaded so in in the runaway scenario right when we get to let's say 35 to 10 the problem is I don't think Duke's going to be able to continue to score easily on the backups from Alabama and I think the backups from Alabama once Duke's backups go in the game are probably both due to extremely good depth on the defensive line, uh, really high quality running backs and poor run defense from Duke is probably going to be able to run over Duke and run away, uh, run away late. We've seen this off and on with Alabama the past few years. I think it was a Tennessee game a couple years ago where we said the same thing. Um, and it was like Bo Scarborough's big, you put like the hand in the, the fan's face. Now, if I remember right. Yeah. Uh, we're ending up scoring like 59, same, same kind of deal. Lack of, Lack of depth on one side and extreme depth on the other is going to cause us to be a, a runaway score. Probably not indicative of even how close the game is, um, but but just going to cause the score itself to get out of hand. Based on what we talked about in our postmortem that we've done five times now about the, from the Clemson game, the one thing I want to see, if I'm an Alabama fan, is offensively I want to see Alabama taking advantage of a short passing game. We know – Two over the top to Judy, Judy is there, but we also know teams can take that away, good ones. And we know that, you know, the RPO slant is there and teams like Oklahoma couldn't take it away, but teams like Clemson could. I want to see, if I'm an Alabama fan, outs, hitches, throws to the running back, a little more horizontal ball, not Lane Kiffin horizontal ball, but a little more horizontal ball, a little more underneath stuff, getting things to your playmakers, putting pressure on the defense to tackle them in space and not necessarily just to protect them, uh, cover them on a deep ball. Is that, because I know you've talked about that too, is that kind of what you want to see too if you're an Alabama fan or is there something else? So I think for Alabama, what you want to see is balance in the offense such that you have the proper counters. And you don't want to see the Lane Kiffin style offense where it's completely side to side uh, because that didn't translate against elite teams either because there was no real verticality. And a lot of times Lane Kiffin's offense has actually struggled against really, really good defenses. They would hit some big, huge plays if they found something to exploit, but they couldn't always consistently move the football in a way that you might like. Um, The flip side of that, I think, might be more like a a Matt Canada offense. We used to joke about how Matt Canada, when he was the offensive coordinator at LSU, they'd have 180 yards passing and 120 of that would come on jet sweeps. Because he would do so much horizontally to strain you. And he didn't have the advantage of a vertical passing game. But he would exploit the lack of proper containment or pressure. Or he sort of over, over straining your utilization. And the, the, the way the defense attacks the middle of the field. The way you drop people into coverage. 
Um, that was missing from Alabama last year. I, I think when they got to the RPO game, uh, we, we've we talked about this a lot because we get so many questions about it, what happened with Alabama Clemson. And, you know, we even talked about, we both of us eventually got, okay, to heck with this, we're going to go watch Alabama Georgia and figure out why that happened. And our, our conclusion really was teams realized they could float corners and safeties around and roll coverage in Alabama. And because they didn't do these, quote, simple, easy plays, you know, hitches or wide receiver screens, you could get away with it because they would leave guys wide open five yards down the field because they knew they were going to throw there. And a lot of times with Loxley, the thing that I I thought saw that was really troubling, particularly rewatching the championship game, I don't know how many times Alabama did not run a single route shorter than the line of game. It was probably, I mean, would you agree with this? Probably 80% of the time, Every Alabama route was going to be beyond the, the line to gain, whatever down it was. Yeah, we had a joke that it was it was four verts on every every play that was whatever and long. It was four verts. Right, and there just was no trust that if you had a hitch or a drag that somebody could catch the ball and run for the first down. There was no trust that on a third and six, when everybody's bailing into coverage, you could do a running back draw and get a first down. And the problem with that is, you know, most of the time you won't if you lean on that. But if you don't have that as a counter, the defense is just going to assume you're going to throw deep. And they can do all kinds of exotic stuff because they're going to bail all the secondary deep into coverage and they're going to roll everybody. And it's really not defensively sound football, but you don't have the basic options available in your offense to say, okay, if they don't cover the running back, I'm just going to dump it to him and, and run for, you know, 50 yards. I mean, Josh Jacobs has this huge highlight that gets played over and over from the Oklahoma game. And it's a simple just dump off to the running back in the flat. And frankly, that was available a lot in the Georgia game. And it was available a lot in the Clemson game. And either they didn't have the option or Tua didn't check to it. All right, y'all. That's about as much as we can talk about this one, given that we both think we know the outcome and it ain't going to be pretty. Sorry, Duke fans, for that, but thanks so much for hanging on this far. And uh, y'all, remember, hit the subscribe button. Give us a like if you liked it. Hit that notification bell if you really want to hear from us in the future. And let us know in the comments what you think the score is going to be. And Duke fans, feel free to mix it up as well. Just make sure you bring your data. Thanks so much, y'all. Have a great week, and God bless.